Some of you, perhaps a few of you in the media, came here today to see if I'm dropping out of the race. <laughs> well, I'm not. A Trump campaign official responded to that statement and more of what Nikki Haley had to say uh, with a rather vile statement. We'll get to it in just a moment. But before we do, here's some more context. Former South Carolina governor and Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley made it clear that she does not intend to drop out of the race despite the fact that her chances of winning the Republican nomination is a long shot. Now, Trump has an overwhelming lead in national polls and his allies are ratcheting up pressure on Haley to drop out, but she's refusing to do so. She did lose the first four nominating contests by pretty huge margins. Haley is on track to lose each of the GOP's first four major nominating contests by significant margins, including in her home state, South Carolina where a Monmouth University slash Washington Post survey published Thursday showed her trailing Trump by 26 points, virtually unchanged since September. Now on the campaign trail, Nikki Haley has been arguing that Donald Trump is not fit to be the leader of this country. And she has referenced his multiple indictments, the fact that he's been convicted in some of these cases that have been brought against him. And he is also, of course, facing $450 million in judgments against him in the civil cases that he lost recently. Now, later in her speech, she doubled down saying that she will not grovel to Donald Trump. Of course, many of the same politicians who now publicly embrace Trump privately dread him. They know what a disaster he's been and will continue to be for our party. They're just too afraid to say it out loud. Well, I'm not afraid to say the hard truths out loud. I feel no need to kiss the ring. I have no fear of Trump's retribution. I'm not looking for anything from him. My own political future is of zero concern. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. Now in response to that, a New York Times political reporter, Jonathan Swan posted this on X, Nikki Haley in announcing she's not dropping out, quote, I feel no need to kiss the ring and I have no fear of Trump's retribution. I'm not looking for anything from him. And in a quote tweet, a Trump campaign official, Stephen Chang says, she's going to drop down to kiss ass when she quits, like she always does. Now, that's certainly a lot more vulgar <laughs> than what we're used to. But Cenk, I do feel like there's a little bit of truth in that. I think there's there's some truth being told on both sides here. There's truth in what Nikki Haley is saying about how Republican lawmakers absolutely loathe Donald Trump. I know this from firsthand experience. When I was debating Ben Shapiro before the Pennsylvania Chamber of Commerce, and I had conversations behind the scenes with Republicans there, they can't stand Donald Trump, but they're terrified to say it publicly because they're afraid of Trump's base. They're afraid of the MAGA movement. So he, she's telling the truth there. But it's also true that the very people who tend to trash Trump, especially electorally, then turn around and kiss his ass after they lose. And I have examples to provide. In fact, let's go to those examples right now. First example is, well, of course, Ted Cruz. Can we go to that video? I'm skipping ahead a little bit. But remember, Ted Cruz's wife was called ugly by Donald Trump, and then he proceeded to phone bank. Hi, this is Ted Cruz calling. I was calling to encourage you to come out and vote on election day. I just wanted to encourage you to come out and vote. Thank you and God bless you. Shortly after Donald Trump won, you also had Mitt Romney meeting with Trump to see if there was any cabinet position that Trump would give him. In the end, Trump gave him no cabinet position and then this infamous photo was released. So. I don't think it's far fetched that Nikki Haley would turn around and kiss his ass. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, no, it's not. Um, so I, I totally agree with you. Both sides are correct. Uh, it drives me crazy when they declare an election over 
the press loves to do this. Like, there's two votes in, and they're like, that's it, it's over. You know, in New Hampshire, it was 54 43. That's pretty close, especially against a former president and a guy who has a giant cult in your party. And she came that close to him in New Hampshire, and then the press was like, it's over. It's just one state, what are you talking about? Let's go to South Carolina, let's go to all these different states, give her a chance. Look, I, she's a neocon, I, I can't stand her. But she also has never tried to end democracy before. But the, even that's not relevant. Let them actually have a competition without declaring it ahead of time, because that becomes self-perpetuating. When the press says it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over, everybody thinks it's over. So now her, that's why she's sliding in the polls because people think the election's over. It's so counterproductive, so dumb. So all the things that she says to criticize Trump are of course true. On the other hand, Anna's absolutely right. Every single person, I mean, Trump doxed Lindsey Graham. He gave out his phone number to the public. They sent death threats to him. And right afterwards, Lindsey Graham collapsed in front of Donald Trump's shoes and started licking them with wild abandon, right? So every Republican has been his bitch and just groveled at his feet. So, you know, Nikki Haley's his last competitor, and she's gonna make a decision on whether she's gonna make more money working for Wall Street lobbyists, etc., being the normal crook that she is, or if she's gonna try to get more power within the Trump administration. But at this point, her bridges are so burned, if she goes to grovel, it'll be very poorly played. I don't think that's the right way to go. I think if you're Nikki Haley, and I think she'll get this, you go to Wall Street, collect millions of dollars from your donors, that goes straight into your pocket while you're pretending to work. You don't show up at all. Every once in a while, you call your former Republican friends and go, "Oh yeah, yeah, Wall Street needs a tax cut for sure." Oh yeah, and then here's some checks, etc., and then come back four years from now and run again. So that's my guess as to what she'll do. But if she thought for a second it would help her political career to grovel, she would do it instantly. She has no moral core either. She's a politician.